Hey everybody, thanks for stopping in the garage. And this episode's, uh, we're gonna go back to the John Deere. What is it, an L111 or something? I don't remember, you know, I, I don't care. I get so many machines, it's just like thousands. Anyway, on this episode, we're gonna focus in on going over the coils on this thing, checking them and setting them up. So for those of you that are interested in uh, really doing a coil setup, right? Uh, that's in this video, but we're also gonna take care of a few other things on the machine. We got some other broken stuff, some things that are not working right, and we're just gonna take the whole project a little bit further. We're gonna put an ohmmeter on the coils, um, we're gonna clean the coils, we're gonna take them off, we're gonna measure them there, and then we're gonna put them back and we're gonna set them up, and, uh, and then we're gonna go to some of the other things. So, see you guys in a bit. All right, so now I'm gonna jack it back up. We're gonna pull the coils off and clean them, and then we're gonna test them with the ohm meter, okay? Make sure that they're balanced well, that they're okay. 12 seconds later. All right, now we're gonna do the test two ways. We're gonna do it on the machine, and then we're gonna do it off the machine after I clean it. Okay, so first we're gonna find a good ground. It's gonna go right to the fins. All right, well now we're gonna to go to the secondary. I like to think of it as the coil wire, the, excuse me, the plug wire. 4.54, that's 1,000 ohms, that's not bad. All right, let's check the other one. Four point four five. Excuse me, the other one was four point four five, right? What did I read it upside down? Like dyslexic you wise? No, four point five four. One was four point five four. That's the driver's side and the passenger side is flip the numbers. Four five. That's really good. Let's get them off. And we're gonna clean them up and clean the maggots up and clean the where they stand, you know, the, the posts that they sit on, and then we're going to gap them, all right? So we'll be back in a bit. Hopefully PayPal will be done with me. Still holding. A little dark, right? There you go, you can see it. All right, we're going to buzz this off on the wire wheel, and we'll do both of them. And then we're going to do the uh, flywheel. Let me see if I can make you see it a little bit better with the light. Sometimes with the light, you can see it better, right? Okay? So let's get this cleaned off. We want a good ground and we'll measure it again when I'm done. Okay, so cleaned them up nice. All right, now we can make our adjustments and let's just check. So we've got clip on the ground. I'm gonna push this into the plug wire. 458, all right? So it's a little bit different. It comes up a little different when you clean them and you have good grounds. And they're consistent too, they're stable. That's what you're looking for is stability. Let's do the other one. Try to do this with one hand. Okay. 450, right? Very, very small difference. See, and it is a different reading because it makes a difference. Now, if you want, you can also check a couple of different ways. You can check to the ground wire with the grounding lug here. All right. 1.3 ohms, so it's almost a direct short. There's a little bit of electronics in there, all right? That's what you're doing. You're actually sending the signal for the coil to shut off. It's not just grounding it. There's electronics in it. So let's do this one, too. Let's do let's do the other one. Hold on. I've got one hand, so bear, bear with me. I didn't feel like setting it up on the stand. Okay. 1.13. All right, and you can also test it from the plug wire to that connector, right? <clears throat> you should have a little bit of resistance, very little, uh, because what you're doing is you're shorting out the coil, but it's, like I said, it's a little bit more than that because there's electronics in here. So you wouldn't want it to be more than a couple of ohms. A um, couple of ohms, like one ohm is almost a direct short, and that's what you want. Uh, more than that, like in thousands or hundreds, right, then, then it's, the coil's not good. 
right? It may not even shut the engine off, right? But something definitely would be wrong with the electronics. All right, so all right guys, so we want to clean the maggot. And we're just going to use, I like to use, you can use a wire wheel or wire brush. I'm going to use my scotch Brite on my grinder here. Try to get it where I can get to it. Beautiful. We'll put a little bit of white grease on that. Also, we want to do these standoffs, the mounts, because you want a good ground. That's it. And there was rust on that. The rust from the steel gets impregnated into the aluminum, and then you get aluminum oxide. All right, so now we're going to lube everything up, a little bit of white grease, so all the faces of everything. Put a little oil or white grease on the bolts, and then we're going to put the bolts back down. We'll mount the coils, pull the coil back, just lightly tighten, you know, pull the coil out of the way, the maggots, lightly tighten the coil down by hand, and then we'll come back in in a minute, we'll adjust them 10 thousandths, be right there. These coils, one side says this side out, the other side says cylinder side, but I remember as well too, so I'm going to just put, connect the coil, right, electrically, and I put a little bit of white grease on that tang too because you know, that's the idea you know, again white grease on the mounting hardware and on all the mating surfaces and you can wipe it off when you're done um, it's just to keep it from rusting and make sure that we have a good ground here and also the white grease on the threads you wouldn't want to ever strip these out yeah I've seen it happen it's happened to me so all right, so now we're going to hold it away from the flywheel and just finger tighten it. All right, and I'm going to do the other one too. We'll be back in a minute. Um, we'll do the other one and then we'll do the adjustment. All right, so now it's pulled out of the way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the magnet so that it's sort of the magneto armature is straddling the magnet right between. Okay, here we go. It's straddling it. All right, and I'm just going to lay my 10,000 steel gauge, and I like to use the, oh, I dropped it. I like to use the brass ones. Hold on. I dropped it, so let me go grab it. Try to do too many things at once. Still holding it, PayPal. All right, yeah, UPS just started charging me for no reason. Apparently somebody got a hold of the account, and yeah, you, you can't even, I tried to, to uh, petition it, you know, whatever they call it, and they denied it. They're like, you authorized, we didn't authorize shit. All right, so let's just put that there. Let's hold it in place. And so yeah, good luck me trying to get that money back. It's always something. Loosen up the bolts and it'll suck in, All right? It'll hold it for you. And just make sure, it, you know, it's you're applying just a little bit of pressure and then tighten it up guys that's all you got to do now I'm going to come back um, make sure it's really you know it's nice and tight but what I do get this good and tight this way and then I think this is like eight millimeter but it's also a standard size too like a lot of sizes are concurrent let's just get my gauge back if I can I'm back here, yeah, you. All right, and then let me take my stubby because you don't want to over tighten this. Now, go slow a little bit at a time because it's a stack of laminates, so it's not a solid piece, so it will actually squeeze down a little. That's why I get them good and clean. You can sometimes I put a little oil in between because it just makes it a little better for it to kind of squeeze back together again a little bit at a time right and again stubby and I can tell I'm using mostly my fingers you don't want to strip this and that's another reason why I put oil or white lube on so I can really feel the threads make sure everything is clean the threads are clean so we're looking for a good ground and we don't want rust in our way because we want to get you know ten thousandths is a little tight so I like to make sure everything is perfect. And then this one have to be done again. That one's nice and tight. Oh, it's almost there. Oh yeah. 
It's getting tight. That's it. That one's done. And that one's done. All right. As we used to say, tighten it till just before it gets loose again. All right. I'll be back for the next thing. I think we'll pull the carburetor off next. Hey everybody, thanks for watching um, this episode on the John Deere. And so there's three parts. So depending upon how I set it up, uh, come on back or check out the other parts, right? Depending upon where this outro goes. Um, there's a lots to do on it. So, you know, there's some good stuff. You know, you coil adjustment, installation, cleaning, bench testing, valves, valve adjustment, how to, um, going over all the lube points, uh, the diagnostics we did in the first video we did the pull test because of the issues with the transmission um, there's just there's just a lot to do the only thing I really didn't get into was uh, the deck because he didn't want me to touch that and it wasn't that's beyond the scope so that'll be for another time uh, but we removed the deck um, so anyway thanks for watching guys and I'll be back with another one shortly Arch's garage